Somalia's President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed has announced the suspension of the Prime Minister for suspected corruption. His Prime Minister has described the move as a coup attempt. The raging months-long dispute is widely seen as distracting the government of the Horn of Africa country from fighting an Islamist insurgency. President Mohammed accused Prime Minister Mohammed Hussein Robel of stealing land owned by the Somali National Army. He also accused him of interfering with a defence ministry investigation. In response, Robel says the move is unconstitutional and aimed at derailing the ongoing election. Election. The Prime Minister has also ordered the security forces to start taking orders from him instead of the President. Somalia began holding parliamentary elections on November 1st, which are supposed to be completed by the 24th of December, but only a few of the 275 representatives have been elected thus far. And to speak a little bit more about this, we're joined by Abdullahi Boru Halake, who is an expert on governance, security and peace on East Africa. He joins us now. Abdullahi, just share your thoughts about uh, what's been brewing, as we mentioned, and what has now occurred. Is it a snow screen for delaying or disrupting, disrupting the elections, as the Prime Minister claims? Yeah, thank you. Uh, to piece up at first, I want to say that um, uh, uh, I want to say to all South Africans watching that, you know, much as we are not South African, uh, we are with you in this difficult time uh, for the loss of um, Archbishop Tutu. Um, we will not mourn him, we will celebrate him. Yeah, to Somalia, I think uh, the most important thing really is the fact that this is not a surprise. Anybody who has observed uh, the current administration led by uh, uh, the President Farmajo will not be surprised. The only surprise is that we get surprised when it happens. Mm. This is the second prime minister that he's had problems with. And, um, you know, this, the first one, he went through the right procedure. Uh, the parliament, uh, through a vote of no confidence, overwhelmingly removed him. But this one, um, he has suspended him. Uh, I don't want something that he doesn't have an authority for. The lowest common denominator in all this uh, disruption is really uh, the, the elections in Somalia that seem not to be resolved. When this administration first came into power a few years ago, there was an, it came into power against the crest of an overwhelming support inside and outside Somalia. Five years down the road, this government has made so many mistakes, some deliberate, including the delay of elections and cynically manipulating the country's political processes to bring us to where we are again. Just instead of focusing on the elections, we are now being consumed by the differences between the prime minister and the president. The law and common denominator, lowest common denominator, sorry, is for the president to remain in power and that is not sustainable for peace and security of an already fragile Somalia. Abdullahi, we'll get to the plebiscite itself and the source of the delays, but as we mentioned in the introduction, there are accusations and counter-accusations between the president and the prime minister from the president against the prime minister, mainly that of corruption. You mentioned that the action was unconstitutional, that of suspension. What veracity is there to the claims being made by the president? I think, you know, they usually say, um, give, a bad, give a dog a bad name to hang it. You know, the president says that <clears throat> the prime minister was accused of corruption uh, involving a land uh, that is owned by the Somalia's uh, military. If that is the case, then, that job doesn't rest the job of investigation, the job of prosecuting that case, and the job of eventually determining, all right, whether or not the prime minister was actually involved in, or this is just a mere um, smear campaign against the, pre the prime minister. That is not the job of the president. So the idea that he can go, you know, against the extra legal means, go, go on extra legal means and get rid or suspend the prime minister, there is no law for that, right? The, the prime minister is being is nominated by the president. You know, the way the elections work, 
uh, the lower house is, uh, sorry, the, 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 the elders elect the lower house and the members of the lower house uh, then, you know, uh, nominate uh, uh, the, the members of the lower house, uh, sorry, the, 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 the council of elders um, elect members to the lower house and then, you know, the five regional government elect members to the upper house together they you know elect the president and the president and the president then nominates a prime minister so he has the power he has the authority in that regard what he doesn't have authority is the authority to fire the biggest problem in all this is if such things happen in any other country in the region or on the continent you go to the supreme court for the interpretation there is nothing similar um uh, like that in 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 somalia right now then you're stuck with these, you know, political machinations. So I think that is where the problem is. And now the prime, the prime minister is digging his heels and saying, no, you've got no that authority. In fact, all these other guys should report to me. I run the government. And in fact, uh, if you didn't know, you are not the president anymore. You are an ex-president. All this doesn't board well for mm. the elections and the peace and security in the country. And so speaking about that peace and security, uh, does this have the likelihood of splitting the military uh, along tribal or clan lines? But also, what is the likelihood of the military or the security forces indeed listening to the prime minister when he says they should instead report to him? I think we'll know that in the next few days, uh, depending on how this uh, whole uh, debacle shakes out. But the reality is... You do not need, you know, groups that are really interested in destabilizing. They've been doing it without anything for the last few decades now. They don't need any, uh, you know, invitation to continue destabilizing the country. You know, already it's a country that is largely where, where the clan and clan allegiances tend to take precedence over most of the, you know, formal and informal uh, organization of the state. So if you have now the prime minister and the prime uh, the president, who for obvious reasons, they tend to be picked from, you know, uh, opposite uh, uh, clans, there will be allegiance now that will be divided. Mm. If that spills into the military, then or any other security agencies, what you are witnessing is it need not to be a fully blown, um, you know, breakout along the uh, the clan lines. Even a small percentage makes it very, very difficult, right? So I think for me the biggest worry is, you know, there were questions, there were arguments that these elections have to be postponed to give the country enough time to do that. Let's be honest. The reality is this administration. The only outcome that this administration is interested in is that 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 that, that keeps him in power. Remember, this uh, the presidency. There's not one president in Somalia post you know um, uh, 1991 that has come back or re-elected for the second time. So Farmaja knows very well that he's going against the history, and so he's doing everything to disorganize that. that While that is going on... Is that why he extended his term without elections? And if we look at the election of uh, the first two lawmakers in the 275-member lower house of parliament, they were elected under very heavy security. Indeed. I think... <laughs> for him, he wants to, cut, to, to, to to remain or at least to be elected again um, as the president. And what that means is there's so many forces stuck against him. Every other day, he's manufacturing or he's creating people that are going to oppose him. That is not to suggest that the opposition is, um, you know, um, composed of angels, you know, Quite, quite frankly, two of them were former presidents and their records, as far as the country is concerned, is abysmal. But that doesn't mean that because of that, right, the, the current administration should, you know, ride a rough shot on so many other institutions and, and, and norms. The problem that, you know, you've, you've shared the statements from, you know, international partners, the problem that they find themselves in is, um, well, let's kick, you know, if they continue kicking this can down the road next election, next election, uh, sorry, um, uh, postponing the elections, they're worried that any attempt to try and force him might make things really worse. But the question is, is the current status quo any better? So I think for the current president, the, the bottom line is, 
anything that he does, any maneuvers that he's trying to engage in is to produce that result of him being in power uh, for the next foreseeable future. Will this action have the effect of bringing closer together the opposition under the umbrella of the Forum of uh, National Parties? And given the fact that you have former presidential candidates or, uh, who are part of this, does it then coalesce, should we say, around one leader that can actually then win the elections over Fermajo? Ideally, it should. Unfortunately, it doesn't, because all those personalities reckon that they are supposed to be the president. All of them feel that they want to be the president. If you look at them, the only thing that binds them, you know, the connecting tissue for all these candidates is, oh, we are against Farmajo. That doesn't, that's not enough, you know. And this is the tragedy of Somalia, where you have venal, self-serving, corrupt political elite that continues to perpetuate itself, you know, like, 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 like an organism, you know, every other time, you know, you, you think that this, uh, the time of this one has ended, hopefully something good is coming along, you see them reproducing themselves and recreating themselves. And the only thing that they have is, you know, they want to be the president. None of them, I mean, in some aspect, Farmajo, for all his faults, has potentially done better than most of these guys. One of the former president actually sold a facility, you know, Ethiopian property outside, you know, Somalia, and he was stopped right in, in, in his truck. So I think these are people whose records really do not, are not stellar. And so therefore it becomes really difficult for an average Somali being led or people who want to lead them in this format. And the fact that it's not one man slash one woman vote makes it incredibly difficult. That is why initially when Fermajo came to power and he said, we're going to organize one man, one vote, a lot of people are excited because as it is right now, it's largely done by an electoral college and that you can manipulate because it's not as big a number as the 10 million Somalis. Abdullahi, on that point, speak to us about the competition for or from regional influence, the Gulf actors, and how they're likely to manipulate possibly what plays out over the next couple of weeks. I think it's very, that's a very important question to piece because over the last few, I mean, probably a decade now, um, you know, Washington and London and Brussels have, you know, taken their, their eyes off some of these regions, you know, and they, they, they disproportionately focused on the counterterrorism. And during that period, not just the Chinese, but Gulf countries have grown in stature. And the worrying thing with the Gulf countries is that they do not use the normal channels that, you know, we are so used to international diplomacy. That is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Department of Defense or Parliament. Theirs is largely a checkbook diplomacy where, you know, they have used, um, uh, you know, a high, uh, you know, high, an insane amount of money to influence elections, to influence governments, not just in Somalia, in Ethiopia as well, as well as in Sudan, where, you know, the military know that, you know, Washington and London and Brussels can say they are incredibly concerned, but they don't follow that with money. Whereas, you know, the Gulf countries, they don't open their money, but they open their checkbooks. And therefore, a lot of the time they have disproportionate influence. And the reality is, um, you know, these, uh, these, these countries, including Somalia, will need the money but not money for, um, you know, uh, the, 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 to the politicians. That money should go to the state coffers to be able to take care of the needs, that is education, health, and infrastructure. But now it is a very, you know, um, uh, individual transactional kind of relationship that involves um, huge amounts of money rather than it being done through a formal mechanism. And that, I think, um, it's not just in Somalia, and, 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 and that will grow into so many other countries, and it should be something that worries at a time when the number of coups on the African continents 
are growing mm. at a time when there is political backsliding in most of the African countries. Abdullahi, very, very briefly, as you mentioned, the importance of the regional security. How soon can we expect these elections in Somalia to be concluded, if at all, um, any time within the next two months? For the lower house, we've had elections for you know 26 of out uh, uh, of the 257 uh, that needs to be had. That that just shows you the snail pace at which this election will be done. I wouldn't want to hazard any guess, but my guess is we will be having this conversation in the next few weeks and months ahead. And your, 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 my only hope against against hope is that you know um, that will not be the case and I want to be proven wrong and be pleasantly surprised but I've seen Somalia over the last few decades for that to be anything other than you know disappointment from the political leaders all right thank you so much for your time